Welcome back to Legends with Durka, where we have two new things to check out today. The first being the first pan-European battleship sailing into Legends at Tier 4, the Viribus Unitus. Looks like she was an Austro-Hungarian dreadnought built before World War I, and with that, a new commander to helm her, Yenko Vukovic. So, without wasting any time, let's jump right in. <music> Okay, so first we'll check out a build guide for this ship, the ship setup, then we can check out this Dreadnought stats compared to the other battleships at tier 4 and finish off with some gameplay. I'm going to throw in some tips along the way for how to play this ship because it can be a little tricky actually. First, let's see what this match has going on. Low tier, I kind of like these small maps, you're thrown into the action pretty early on. Now there's a CV on the enemy team, and that would be the Achilles heel of the Viribus Unitus, and lots of other things, <laughs> like uh, armor-piercing shells and torpedoes, but we'll get to that a little later on. Anyways, with the CV having planes over here in the area, I'm going to play pretty cautious at first, because this thing has pretty much no AA, so again... We're going to play close to this island, try to make it difficult for this guy to drop torpedoes on me. And with that, let's go right into the ship setup. Aiming Systems Mod 1. Some might argue a secondary battery mod because that's one of the uh, gimmicks of this ship, I suppose, is a long secondary battery range, but I'll get to that a little later. I would use Aiming Systems Mod 1. Commander, obviously, Yanko Vukovic. He is the new pan-European line. BB commander and his base trait is going to reduce your fire duration, which isn't completely useless. It looks like it will be a 10% when fully maxed. We are using Reckless Gunman, which is the unique trait or the unique skill for this commander. It's kind of like Brawler, except your reload buff isn't quite as good and torps are going to be harder to detect, but your range doesn't get nerfed. And this ship has a pretty short main battery range, so that is why we're not using Brawler. I did go with Porcupine, Firefighter, Master Mechanic, and Will to Rebuild because why not? My inspirations are D. Ravel and Edroff. So a community manager did confirm this ship has a 1.95 Sigma, so that is why we're not going to use Cunningham because the shell grouping is good enough stock on its own. And as you know, me, I generally like to try to bring up weak parts of a ship to make it a good all-around ship. You could use Azerlane Sharnhorse to buff the Dispersion a little bit, I suppose, but I just went with Reload and Kedrov to buff the Turret Traverse. Uh, the Turrets turn very slowly, I think it's 45 seconds base, and uh, this ship has horrible firing angles, um, and it, it does have a pretty good rudder shift and a rate of turn, so Kedrov is going to help you keep your turrets on target throughout the game, and will help you do a lot more damage. Okay, stop. What am I doing? Well, if you look at the bottom left of the map, a DD was spotted way over there trying to come around the map. So we are going to go ahead and turn out now, and I'm sure he will be spotted again. He doesn't have any smoke screens, so we're going to turn out, HE loaded, and we're going to punish this guy. If we let him go all the way around, he would probably eventually get to our carrier. He would torp us. We only have an 18% torpedo reduction and not a lot of health, if you haven't noticed. So this DD has got to go. So how does Viribus Unitus compare to the other Tier 4 battleships? For starters, her survivability is a very, very low point. Uh, she has the worst in class health pool, 35,700, but it gets worse. Her heals are only good for around 5,300 a piece. That gives her an effective HP pool of 51,752. Not very good. Even if you used all of your heals, a stock Congo with no heals would have more health than you. So that brings us to the armor scheme. On the surface, it looks pretty good. You got an icebreaker bow, check. Turtleback armor, check. But if you start looking a little closer, it gets worse and worse. The main problem is the giant citadel. It sits above the waterline, and it has this sort of shallow slope, kind of like the Yamato, and we all know how the Yamato catches penetrations. Um, yes, it's a turtleback armor scheme, but again, it's not sufficiently angled really to block incoming shots. Ask me how I know. We'll do something a little bit different here and break down kind of a brawl fail that I had. 
Uh, I mean, fail. I, I don't know. We hit one. <laughs> Look at the ships. But anyways, basically coming up to do a drive-by. And again, look at the turret angles. They are abysmal. Trying to get the back turrets on somebody in this ship is usually a death sentence. So I shouldn't have done that to begin with. We are down to 15,000 HP, which, you know, keep in mind, that's about half of the health this has. So we really quickly try to use our good turn circle to get in and get angled. And while it looks like we're at a pretty decent angle there, he, with his 305 millimeter guns, punched right through the ship. So in brawling situations, even when angled pretty heavily, you can catch some nasty penetrations. Okay, real quickly, before we move on, I just want to explain what I'm doing. This battleship has a low top speed, 21.5, like mentioned, so I don't want to stay in the corner of the map. I want to start to get more centrally located. Not only that, I'm going to set up some crossfires on this Wyoming with my allied battleship over there to the left of me. That is what you need to do if you're in a battleship, set up crossfires. On that note, we have one kill on the board. We're going to get five more. <laughs> so this was a nice little six pack and uh, all I can say about that is it's tier four moving on the guns are fantastic you have 12 305 millimeter guns and yes that's kind of small for the tier some of the battleships like Congo Texas New York they have 356s um but I mean the 305s they are going to give you a pretty nasty alpha strike having 12 of them and again, this is a Dreadnought style battleship, so they're all in super firing turrets, which I was probably pretty advanced for 1912, I would say. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but Alpha Strike, 102,000. It's close to being the best at the tier. Not quite there, but it is pretty close. I have my reload down to 26 seconds. And with those 12 guns, that makes this battleship the best high explosive and armor piercing DPM battleship at the tier. So she can really shell out a lot of damage. Uh, the gun handling. What I seem to notice is maybe sub 9k, 10k. The accuracy seems to be moderately consistent. But if you're shooting at max range, uh, 14 kilometers plus, then you might not be hitting as much. That's just what I noticed. I couldn't really back that up with any statistics. Just kind of my uh, what I saw in the gameplay. On to the AA. Um, I hinted at this earlier. CVs could be your worst nightmare because you have an AA rating of 8 and a damage per second of 9, which means you are tied for the worst AA performance at the tier. I think it's the Nikolai 1, the Soviet premium battleship also has equally as garbage AA. So playing um, around allies or doing your best to avoid carriers is going to be necessary on this ship. Another quick tip while we're playing along here, we blind fired that kamikaze and I just wanted to point this out. If you have a DD that's spotted, they're slowing down on their smoke screen, that means they're probably about to go unspotted. Just stay aimed in on them even though you lose your gun lock, keep your cursor right where it was, and fire. Chances are you're going to hit them, especially at close range, and we were rewarded with that kill. Now, on that note, she does have some pretty good handling, and that can make you very annoying to aircraft carriers. You can just continually turn into them and turn in and turn in. Um, while she's not fast, 21.5 knots, I mean, that is better than New York, Texas, and Nevada, the American standards, but she has a very good turning circle. Probably the best of the tier. No, it is the best of the tier, 530 meters, and a pretty good rudder shift to boot. Um, so yeah, the speed does fall behind. This is the tier where you have Congo and Miyogi and the Julio Cesare that are starting to get pretty quick at the tier. You know, Congo and Miyogi uh, doing 30 knots. Um, and here we are at 21.5. I did buff this with Guiprat, or however you pronounce that, as an inspiration and use a speed flag. And that got the ship over 23 knots. And in this gameplay back here, that is actually what we're using. So, let's check back in on the game. Basically, we are just hunting the last of the reds. I would have really liked to get the kill on the Gangoot. That would have made this a 7 kill game, but that is okay. Now, one thing I have left out of this video so far is talking about the secondaries. From what I saw, this has the longest base secondary range of any tier 4 battleship. 
I believe it is 5.2. And the next nearest one was the Koenig at 4.5, the Iron Duke at 4.5, the ARP Haruna at 4.6. So it is the longest base secondary range. So I did go ahead and test a secondary build on it. We put on the secondary battery module, a Von Hipper, who is a 16.2 or 16.3, I believe, and a Haruna commander as inspirations. And we got the range up to 7.5 kilometers. And that is cool and all for a tier four dreadnought. My issue, however, is the DPM of the guns. The reload with that build was 9.2 seconds. I think it's 10 seconds stock. So this is a really uh, slow cycling of your secondary guns. And I think it's just a little bit too slow to deal enough consistent damage. You do have a nice fire chance. They're HE shells and you have an 11% fire chance. So that could be a decent way to rake in some damage. But my issue with that build on this ship is it mostly means brawling. And I have pointed out why this thing can be tough to be a brawler. The low HP pool is very unforgiving. One torpedo from a high yield torpedo boat could erase one third of your health. If one of those kamikaze torpedoes had hit us right now, our game probably would have been over or pretty close to it. So yeah, that and with the Citadel situation, you can eat penetrations pretty bad. I have had my best luck in this ship at medium ranges so that the gun accuracy continued to be okay, but I was still safe enough to turn and run away if I needed to. On that note, we showed the gun firing angles are terrible. If you're kiting away, they're actually just a little bit worse than when you're pointing forward. Either way, it's bad. And if you're going to get all 12 guns on a boat, you're probably going to eat some damage. Uh, this Ishizuchi, though, is shooting HE, I believe. So we have nothing to fear to just turn and let this guy have it. And let him have it, we do. And that just leaves the Langley. So my opinion on this boat, which of course I saved to the very end, is that it's pretty freaking fun. Um, it's highly rewarding because it's very easy to get erased and taken out of the game. You definitely don't want to be the frontline battleship. You kind of want to be like in this game where the reds are focusing on other things and you can kind of move around the map and shoot broadsides and devastate people. So let me know what you guys think of her in the comment section down below. I'd be curious to hear if you're going to cop or drop. And that is that game right there. Also, I wanted to point out, look how much XP the Texas got with his Clear Skies medal. So if you've ever wondered how much XP you get for shooting down airplanes, it's a lot. <laughs> we had six kills, dev strikes, close quarters, experts cracking, and he got more base XP than us. So with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.